we got to talk yeah. about Freddie Freeman yeah. because we didn't know what to expect coming into this series. Freddie with the high ankle sprain, we saw him hobbling around throughout the postseason before the World Series, didn't have an extra base hit, yeah. and then, of course, in grand fashion, the walk-off grand slam in game one. And in that moment, don't you kind of feel like that just turned everything around in the series because the Dodgers lose that game one. Obviously, they're not here now 3-0. There's no question that that changed everything in this World Series. I remember you asking me in the NLDS that can Freddie Freeman even hit a home yeah, run right did, now? Did he have the power? Did he have the power because that ankle was bothering him so much? And he gets those four days off, and he's just been a different guy. And you can see this home run uh, earlier today. Look where this pitch is set up, way outside, and that's just a big mistake. <laughs> and, I mean, that was a foot away from where he wanted that ball and Freddie Freeman just driving it out of the ballpark and, and it just every game it feels like Freddie Freeman plays in the World Series five in a row he's hit a home run but that was a huge moment in that game pretty indicative of the starting pitcher and Smith tonight I, I thought he was off but that pitch especially to go fastball there to Freddie Freeman I know that that inner corner up and in maybe not exactly the hot spot for him but boy he's getting him in the World Series and he's sure making pitchers pay. Well, all three of his home runs now have come yeah on that fastball that's been up and in and he has turned on it each and every time we know he was looking for it in game one in that case that was a complete miss as you said and he just destroyed it it's so great to see Freddie having this kind of a series and obviously he's the MVP of the series at least at this point oh there's no doubt about it you know the amazing thing though is that up and in pitch he was hitting 162 there during the regular season, which is the worst of anywhere in the strike zone for Freddie Freeman. But come October, he's been a different guy, finally healthy with that ankle, and he continues to deliver. And you know what? He's the easiest guy in the world to root for as well. Just this all-around good guy. He's been through so much this year, and then to be able to have that moment in Game 1 and then continue it. He had a big moment in Game 2 and then the home run tonight to allow Walker Buehler to pitch a lot more freely having a 2 nothing lead. I thought that was a big deal. And to hit that cutter out tonight, how many of those cutters has he hit up for a home run in his career? Uh, that would be zero. Zero. Cutter First didn't time cut, though. ever. Yeah, yeah it, was, it wasn't exactly <laughs> a cutter. It was more of a straight fastball. Let's, yep. uh, let's go back to Teoscar Hernandez, and he has done so much for this team. He's great in the clubhouse. He is great at the bat. We've seen what he did, career high in home runs this year. But for him to have the moment that he had tonight in left field on that throw to the plate that was absolutely on top. I mean, you can kind of question why send Stanton on this one. He had the ball before he caught it, but that is an absolutely perfect throw. And if you're going to make that challenge to try to score there, it's going to take a perfect throw. But look at this tag on the money throw on the money. That is wow. picture perfect right there. Mookie Betts is fired up. He had made a pretty nice defensive play mm -hmm. earlier in that inning. And that was so key as well for Teoscar Hernandez. It really felt like things were starting to slip away for Walker Bueller. As dominant as he was, I thought, in the second and third inning. In the fourth and fifth, you could, I wouldn't say he was reeling, but you could see that he maybe wasn't quite as dominant as he was early on. But the Dodgers defense definitely picked him up. And how about this? The Dodgers are up 3-0 now in the World Series. They can wrap it up tomorrow in the Bronx. And Shohei Otani, we hope that that shoulder is going to be okay. He had that subluxation in the last game. It is amazing because he's essentially not done a whole lot. He, he actually did get on base, got the walk tonight, and he scored. And later got on base again with the hit by pitch. But without Shohei Otani being the superstar Shohei Otani that we've come so used to seeing throughout this entire regular season, the Dodgers are in a perfect position. Well, the way this Dodgers team is built, they're not reliant on Shohei Otani having to be the hero. They have so many other pieces up and down the lineup for this Dodgers team, certainly at the top with Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman. But you talked about Tommy Edmond earlier. Awesome. Lux has had some moments. So you don't have to have everybody playing like a superstar all the time. That's the beauty of having the depth this Dodgers lineup has. They can absorb Shohei maybe not being his normal self. All cylinders are fired right now for the Dodgers and that's the way we love it we are waiting to hear from the guys Dave Roberts any moment now going to head to the podium we're going to get him on the mic live we'll take you there so we'll take a quick time out